when we look at appearances and uh, we take into account that there is a maya which has enveloped the Lord, it seems like a maya whose purpose is to delude us. That's how it is described. Maya, deluding maya, the famous bhajan, Maya Badi Thagani, written by none other than the great mystic Saint Kabir. And he says that it, even the gods are pursued by Maya. They too are deluded. So obviously when we say that there is a power which is here to delude us, to fool us, to cheat us, and this power has either overpowered God or it has, God has sanctioned this, then what are we actually saying? We are saying you are not wise enough. And that's why those who follow this doctrine never discover the integral wisdom. But those who embrace the world and then transcend it, that's why this is one of the things that Sri reveals in Essays on the Gita. So he says that, you know, why Arjun is blessed with this tremendous great vision? Because Arjun is not a runaway or a castaway. He faces the world takes the challenge. He says, therefore, he has become the adhikari of the integral vision. So, first we have to embrace. There is the lower maya, which what does it make us feel? We are finite creatures, helpless creatures. That is the delusion. Delusion is not that, oh, this is mine, that is mine. That's a different thing. First, it makes us feel I am very small, insignificant, tamasic uh, ego. I am no good, I am helpless. I must depend on this person, that person, this object, that object. Why? Because deep within, we want to reclaim that state of all power. So the finite on deep within, it has hunger for the infinite because deep within it knows it is infinite. But the finite faces the challenge of death. There is no other way. If finites were to continue ad infinitum, it won't work out. So finite must face the challenge of death and the shock of the all, each finite element. And by that it first grows by taking the challenge, not by running away or escaping from it. And then when it grows and is sufficiently ready and developed, then the infinite, it must discover the infinite, but not by abandoning the finite, but on the basis of the finite. This is the great secret. And it is there in the Isha Upanishad. And that's why Isha Upanishad, because it's the basis of life divine. There are uh, great pandits, some of them have even said it is not an authentic Upanishad. <laughs> even words have been tweaked. And Shubhinda speaks about it in, if you read the Isha Upanishad. Just to suit the purpose. For instance, it says, Karma Nevani, uh, not Karma Nevani, <laughs> Kurvan Neveha Karmani Jiji Vishat Chatang Samas. Such a powerful statement. Verily by doing works. But again, interpretation works are necessary till you are ready for knowledge and liberation. It has been tweaked. And Shurabindu says that there is a straight meaning of the words. So what does it say? It says, on one side, that if you pursue only Vidya, you are not interested with this lower play. You want straight away to go into the higher play. It's like a child in kindergarten tells his papa, please somehow you have great connections, please put me, enroll me in a PhD program. It may look absurd, but some parents do it. There was a one parent I still know, and you would connect, who gifted a airplane <laughs> and an airline to a four-year-old. And you know how now police is after him, <laughs> chasing him. Why? Because it, without, when you are not ready for something, Arjun has to become ready for a great action. See how he is prepared. So lower maya has to prepare us for higher maya. But there is a shortcut we require. I must go straight away. So that's not allowed. That's why Shubhinda says, after we have served the great divided world, God's bliss and oneness are our inborn right. So what happens? So there are these two mayas, which are known as Vidya and Avidya. Avidya is, which has forgotten the oneness. So when the individual thinks individual is only everybody is a separate unit, that is avidya. 
डिस्टिंक्शन इज फाइन बट डिस्टिंगटिवनेस एंड डिस्टिंक्शन एंड डिफ्रेंसिएशन इज नॉट सेपरेटनेस इज अ वेरी सटल एर ईच वन हैज टू मैनिफेस्ट समथिंग ऑफ द डिवाइन इन दैट सेंस देर इज अ डिस्टिंगटिवनेस बट इफ इट थिंक्स आई एम द ओनली वन देन दे इज अ प्रॉब्लम सो Avidya is when I think I am separate. This is separate. God is separate. World is separate. People are separate. Objects are separate. And then its extreme form is, but I am at the center of everything. Everybody should listen to me. Everybody, the world should follow me. Everybody should have the same ideology. God also must obey me. At every call, he must be there and do everything for me. Isn't he a servant? He is, of course, he has become the slave of all, but not. Um, he cannot transgress the law that has been made for evolution of course he sweetly suffers all but he becomes that so shri krishna becomes everybody's uh, he picks up the plate in rajasu yagya but he also slays shishupal in the same because it it you cannot transgress there is a law of evolution what this law is will shobindra will reveal to us what is this law how it has come into existence do the law itself indicates in the origin it's not chaos so if we don't bring maya we say why do we have to do this god said let there be light he can throw out light and everything else now if the infinite throws out things like that there'll be chaos because when things are projected in time and space they have to follow an order if you don't have an order it will collapse so what is that power which orders fashions everything puts them together in a harmonious togetherness that is maya in its origin so its origin is that otherwise if there is only infinite cosmic mind some people say mind is created mind is ignorant even if you take it's a cosmic mind so cosmic mind is creating phenomena so there will be no order no no possibility of any kind of harmony it be chaotic so they say see there are accidents but shurvindo reminds us that what looks like times accidents are god's random plan they look accident because we don't know the working of the higher maya from behind it is she who creates intervenes and create the seeming accidents because we don't know accident randomness chance fate these are terms which basically dignified we have saying i don't know so we use these <laughs> these words so what does the shruti say first it says avidya so if you live only in avidya you are in darkness why because you don't know oneness what about those who leave this entire field of multiplicity go into oneness he says that is a greater darkness so what should you do he says विद्यांच विद्यांच यस्त द्वेदो भयम सह टुगेदर ब्रिंग दम टुगेदर विद्या विद इन एंड प्लेइंग इन द फील्ड ऑफ मल्टीप्लिसिटी वाई वाई डू वी नीड टू डू इट एंड देन सी इज द फंक्शन ऑफ बोथ अविद्यांच मृत्युम तीर्थवा विद्यांच अमृतम आश्नुते through avidya you go beyond death it is this which will slowly by expanding your consciousness take you beyond the limits death is limits whatever is limited finite in its sense will die die in the sense it, it has to but slowly we can't be ready for that infinity like a little seed uh, cannot straight away become the what vraksh so it has to big banyan tree so it has to slowly slowly go through a process so all life comes to help us expand our consciousness all contrary is that we made in life are meant to help us grow that's why when god loves us immensely he keeps some people near us who love us and whom we love dearly but they are our critics why he does it because he loves us it's better that a person who loves you is your critic <laughs> than some random people <laughs> so avidyancha mrityum tirtva how do we go beyond death by going beyond the limits vidyancha then what does vidya do you have gone beyond the limits but it makes you discover immortality vidyancha amritam asnute what is immortality that which cannot die what is that sat 
pure existent. That's what we look for permanence. The permanence of the Buddha, it is the pure existent. It is the substance of being. Its touch automatically makes us aware of our own immortality. Its touch is there in the psychic. That's why if we go through this door, we become conscious of our immortality. Why? Because through any door, if we touch the divine, one of the signs again, that one has found the soul. And the mother says, you are no more afraid of death. You are conscious of your immortality. Why you become conscious of your immortality? Not because it is written in the book that, you know, soul is immortal, therefore I keep repeating, I am immortal, immortal. It doesn't work. The moment Mr. Death comes on, now I think he doesn't come in Bhaisa, he comes in those big ga gadis. He has also upgraded Mercedes, Benz, on the roads, casually driving. He has those Yamdut sitting in those gadis who kuchlo and run away. So he comes in that, that form. But one who has found the soul is not only af not afraid of death, he has discovered the immortality. Why? Because the, he is in contact with the divine, the divine within. And the divine within has that substance which is permanent, it is immortal. So instantly you touch it, you know, I cannot die. And it's not an act of belief, it's an act of experience. So this is the basic. So avidya first can't escape, then you go into vidya. And Shobindo reveals that in very powerful lines. The chapter itself, chapter 13, is the divine maya. So we have also in the Gita, Sri Krishna says it is my maya. Don't try to beat it. That's why many people who want to get rid of this, they don't like Krishna. Because Krishna is Anand Me. He says, why he created his Maya? He is a Chalava. But this Chal has a wisdom behind it. It is Krishna. It's not some ordinary Chaliya. Because there is a reason in everything. So this, he says, it is my Maya. And Sri says something very powerful. He says, you can slay Moha. You cannot slay Maya. Because Maya is of the Lord. You can slay Moha. Moha comes from Avidya Mai. That's the delusion. Avidya Mai makes us feel that I am separate. This world is only for me. Everybody must listen to me. Everybody must act according to how I want them to act. And sometimes it's ridiculous. A person has grown 60 years, at least let him know. <laughs> Rest in peace, you can't change. But there is, and it's a good thing to remind, no, no, no. Every time you think that you are 60, somebody will come and say, this is not how you should do things. Outside world, they will not say. They say, Umar ka lihaj. Ashram mein nahi hai, baut achha hai. Because, otherwise we start feeling we are good old people. Why? Because everybody is respecting us. Behind the back, they say, he's an idiot, fool. But in front, here, no. Because, <laughs> avidya is acting through, vidya is acting through avidya. Suddenly, somebody will say, you are behaving like an idiot. Outside, you tell it to a... He will say, yeah, Bache thoda to meri bete ke umar ka hai, etc, etc. No, bete ke umar. <laughs> Your bete ka umar wala will tell you. Even grandchild will tell you. Nowadays, divine has done it in every house, not only in ashram. Children will tell you, Dad, you don't know. And if child don't tell you because he was old age, your grandchild will 100% tell you. So if you don't have a grandchild, you are very lucky. <laughs> Kya kya sunna padta? <laughs> and you would have seen at four year old, he is handling WhatsApp and you would have said, Aaj ke bachche kharaab ho ge, because you have no choice but to lament. <laughs> and all that stuff. So, this is the, we have to transcend but going through it. Okay, so he says, what is this? As the poet, Artist or musician, when he creates, does really nothing but develop some potentiality in his unmanifested self into a form of manifestation. So this creation is not a deceit. It is a manifestation. But a progressive manifestation. Like a child has to grow and fulfill his dream. But before fulfilling his dream, he is set along the lines as if he is to fulfill the parents' dreams. Because that's how he has to take the challenge of avidya. 
Then a time come when he discovered I am my own dream. That becomes many times harder. And yet that's what it is about. So what is the child doing? Where is the dream? In his heart. Who put the dream there? Whoever has given the aspiration and the dream has also given us the means of fulfilling it. He has provided everything that is possible. But we have to have the leap of faith. So, manifestation. And as the thinker, statesman, mechanist, only bring out into a shape of things that which lay hidden in themselves, was themselves, is still themselves, when it is cast into form, so is it with the world and the eternal. All creation or becoming is nothing but this self-manifestation. What is the sign that we are on track? That we are manifesting what is the dream within us? Sri Krishna goes on to say, Swadharmo nidhanam shriya paradharmo bhayavaha. So what is the sign? Manifestation is of delight. It brings joy. It doesn't matter. World may appreciate it, doesn't appreciate it. It may be worth nothing outwardly. It may not fetch you money. But it will give you delight. The sign that you are on track. But if we are doing everything, earning loads and everything, but it's not giving that inner joy. So we have to look within. So all creation is a manifestation. And all manifestation as an act of creation is delight. That's why all truly creative actions... Be it the smallest, making a making even a good chapati well. It gives you joy. And you want to multiply that joy when you are expecting the other person will appreciate. Sorry, chapati is a wrong example. <laughs> Maybe you know dal or sabzi. Ah, how tasty it is. What happens? Joy multiplies. Or if somebody is a spoil sport, is giving the vibration of pain or indifference. Aisa wala banana tha. Joy gets diminished because we are not living in infinite. Otherwise, if you are living in infinite, we will tell him. If somebody says, Bhot bekar hai, tere liye kisne banaya hai? Bhagwan ko prashat chada hai maine. Finished. Period. <laughs> you may appreciate, you may not appreciate your problem. I made it as a prasad. That's called living in the infinite. If you do it genuinely, not as an excuse. After I made it as a prasad, you may appreciate, you may not appreciate. Somebody once uh, asked, after the program, we have this program now, children do it. And one child asked, it was in front of me. And the child asked one of the uh, very elderly sadhaks of the ashram. He said, how was it? So he said, the sadhak said, it's an offering, isn't it? It's a consecration, isn't it? And the child understood. It's not about how was it. That itself brings joy. Because you are doing it as an offering. So it is that. Next page. Page 121. It is working out a play, a rhythm a development of its own existence. Therefore, whatever comes into the world seeks nothing but this, to be, to arrive at the intended form. It is driving us from inside. What is that intended form? We'll, Shobinda will reveal to us subsequently. What is that intention inside? And if you don't touch it, you'll be unhappy. You may be doing anything. People may say, ah, very nice. But you are not happy. This is not the divine intention inside. And then when we are not happy, we do many stupid things. As I said, like partying, gathering flatterers around so that you feel happy. <laughs> so, <laughs> you want, yes sir, very nice sir, even if you are doing the most foolish things. So this all is a sign that we have deviated from this truth of being. To enlarge its self-existence in that form, to develop manifesting crees, realize infinitely the consciousness and the power that is in it, even in a limited scope. That's why a married woman with nothing else to do except take care of the husband still could discover that infinite by perfection of that womanhood, what was known as sati. 
simply by living by that truth. Thank God there were no woke feminists that time. They would have realized that you don't have to lecture me. I know what it means I am doing. And that's how they could rise even to what heights. In whatever form. Then you will have a new form. So each form till you are ready for that. So whatever task is given to us, we should do with that eye on perfection and with this. That it's not for somebody but it's my offering. See all the practices come from there. It's my offering to the divine. It may be the smallest of things. Because in the divine eye there is nothing small or great. And then through that we are prepared. The delight of the form, the delight of coming into manifestation, the delight of the form of being, the delight of the rhythm of consciousness, the delight of the play of force and to aggrandize and perfect that delight by whatever means is possible in whatever direction, through whatever idea of itself, may be suggested to it by the existence, the conscious force, the delight active within its deepest being. That is the true Swadharma. It is active within us. That's why it is said that the most happiest experience that a woman has, men are deprived of this, is to have a child born. It's so strange. There is pain, there is so much of God knows what, but when the child is born through all this, it is manifestation of delight. Because this is the greatest creation that one can ever do. I mean, I am not talking of very high things, but within this because you have brought out of your substance another being. So this is just like the divine out of his substance brings the word. And it is known as the most transcendent, The what is it called in that fellow who stole from India and uh, now his theories are being taught? Uh, Abraham Maslow. He stole. He came here, went to Ramanasha. <laughs> no, no, I knew the name. I deliberately wanted. And now you read in Indian books of management and all this, uh, gurus, Abraham Maslow's theory. When I saw it, I said, what kind of nonsense are you? <laughs> Self-transcendent, hierarchy of needs. Hey, know how to put in words, na? We have used Sanskrit. We Hindi in Hindi. But we have brought out a much greater thing. Somebody based on Abraham Maslow has said, Bhuke pet na bhajan gopala. That's Abraham Maslow. But what does Kabir say? He says, if you take the name of Hari, everything is taken care of you. That is a greater truth. Overtopping Maslow. But anyways, Maslow is gone. Let him rest in peace. But this act of bringing out of oneself and see how the mother engages at every step and fathers can't understand why she is taking so much pains even he is grown up are bada ho gaya hai. and what is the mother's answer you won't understand and true <laughs> all fathers have a smile I know because this is the experience of everyone she brings out of herself father has just put a seat and has put money in the bank that's his job of course, he has some more jobs, <laughs> but the real. So, this is for the delight. And it can be in any form. People who used to think, hey, ye kya hai? Bachcha paida ke. this is so stupid. Look, because of a lady, Jijabai, India, uh, during the time, got freed from the Mughal rule. Because she brought out Shivaji out of her own yagna going on in her heart. She saw her husband suffer under the Mughal rule. He used to feel uh, unhappy, but he had no choice, not Mughal, sorry, but uh, okay, they're cousins. Muslim rule. She couldn't do anything, but she put all that fire in Shivaji. Fed by the fire of the Eastras of Jijabai, there was born the mighty Shivaji who had 12 challenges. People who were taking a cow to slaughter because he carried Jijabai's fire inside his heart. Is that a mean, a small act? You are only having a children. This is not to advise <laughs> having many children. <laughs> this is that everything is delight. This is not a small act or, or an advice that yes, yes, we should all have children. That's not the idea. But it's that conscious how, you know, everything can become an act of delight. The delight of the play of force and to aggrandize and perfect that delight. This is what we are here for. 
But such completeness is not possible in the individual consciousness concentrated within the limits of the individual formation. So it cannot be, if I am thinking only of myself, I cannot. If I am selfish, I am thinking only of my fayda, my advantage, my benefit, then these things. So I'll read some very powerful passages. So this is what he is. So he says, so we have uh, a very beautiful line. So why does the, so what does the infinite do? First he, uh, through a process of involution, that idea, that uh, Sachidanand, what it wants to develop, how he puts that idea comes later. That idea he seeds in everything, like a seed. In a seed, the idea of the tree is there. Which tree? According to the idea in that seed. So there is an order and rhythm. If only mind has created, it cannot. Mind is random. It is ignorant. If mind had created, suddenly like that man who was lying under the, uh, you know, sitting under a big banyan tree, and he had near him pumpkin which grows on that, you know, Lata. So he was thinking, what kind of foolish of God, such a lovely fruit, pumpkin, big, nice. It is growing on this small little Lata, tender. But he says, look at Banyan, such a strong tree and small little Bhargat ka fall, na? So he said, God is so foolish till a burger dropped on his head. <laughs> and he said, thank God, pumpkins are not growing. <laughs> Otherwise, what would have been my state? <laughs> the coconuts, how in a small area confined? <laughs> Very rare I have heard of coconut fall. But if it, it falls randomly, by the way. But if it falls, <laughs> you are gone. <laughs> but it is... So many coconuts all within that small little space. Otherwise, imagine a big tree having coconut. <laughs> what would be the state? So, we, that idea is within everything. And it has a meaning and a purpose. So, there is an involution of, in, in the coconut, in the bargad, in everything, there is the Sachidanand. But he has limited himself into a limited idea. Why? How he has done it? By process of involution. Involution means he hides everything behind and only one little thing he puts forward. That's why the best example of involution is a seed. All energy of the tree goes into a seed. But don't underestimate the power of an ordinary seed. <laughs> Just because it falls on the ground, he says, look at this seed fallen on the ground. Yes. Tomorrow you will need all the mangoes that will come from that tree. So this is how in a seed he packs the entire Sachidanan through involution packs inside. Now this is fine, we have understood. But now the problem is, Shobindu uses a very beautiful, humorous statement. Still we have found, when we have found that all things are Sachidanan, all has not yet been explained. We know the reality of the universe. We do not yet know the process by which this reality has turned itself into this phenomena. We have the key of the riddle. We have still to find the lock in which it will turn. There is a very interesting book. It looks like from this paragraph, this line from the Life Divine, they have put the title. One was, if universe is the answer, what is the question? And same thing we know in that <laughs> Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. So there are people who are struggling to find the answer to a problem and after many generations, suddenly on their computer the answer flashes. Answer is 42. So everybody says the answer is 42, answer is 42. Say, but what was the question? They have forgotten the question. If the universe is the answer, what was the original impulsion? If God created the universe, we now understand. We have the key. But where is that lock through which he locked himself there and brought it into existence? So, that's where he 
the maya comes in. We perceive a process. We are aware of a law. If you look at this existence, conscious form, there is a process and a law. It is true that this law, when we analyze it, seems to resolve itself into an equilibrium of the play of forces and a determination of that play into fixed lines of working by the accident of development and the habit of past realized energy. In everything, atom, there is a law. You can break the law. It's not something infallible. Process of birth, there is a law. You can break the law. Cloning, you can do. And it's going to create imbalances when you do these things. But there is a process and a law. This law is a habit. So therefore, it's not something which is forever fixed. But it is fixed for the moment, for the purposes of creation. Of course, we are entering into a phase when the law will be changed. So, uh, that's why the Mother and Shubhinda did not come to go beyond the law. They have come to change the law. So, we will observe many changes. And what's one such change is that nowadays we are hearing of monkeys coming wherever there is Ram or Hanuman. And the most fantastic true story that I heard very recently, I think, Taja Taja, yesterday or something, was that, you know, there was a girl who was a devotee of uh, Hanuman and she goes to uh, Mathura, we all know, whoever has gone. Don't carry anything in the hand or in the pocket, monkey will take it. Mobile, pen, anything. So, we are advised. Specs, you have to keep the specs in the pocket, they will take it. So, everybody advised don't go there because monkeys are living there. This girl has her own streak of bhakti. She's, she just kept walking. And now all the monkeys suddenly, who is this human who has come into this world, all becoming restless. This is a true story, uh, first hand account from someone who was witness it. And <coughs> she suddenly put on her mobile Hanuman Chalisa. Everybody, all the monkeys became quiet. Throughout the Hanuman Chalisa, they were quiet. This is called contacting the spirit of the species. And through, there are ways and means, India had this knowledge. Mother has talked about it with cats and uh, this thing. I tried it with the rats in Desiree. Uh, I mean, they got so dangerous. In front of my door, he's sitting and big, fat, Strong rat and he's not feeling scared. I am feeling, what is this fellow doing? I can't go and open the log. See, that is the thing. <laughs> he's sitting, whatever I may try, dum 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 dum, then he becomes very aggressive. So I said, what do I do? So I had no choice but to pray. I said, oh rat god or gods of the rats. So this went away. But this, he was biting people, everything. I didn't feel like using rat traps. I just prayed. I said, whoever, wherever you are, no, we don't mean harm. This mother's place, no, please, kindly. And they've quit the place. They come sometime because after all, old habits die hard. And it was their breeding ground. Sometimes they come, pop up. But they were massive, plenty. Hundreds. Coming and entering and biting this, that, all kind of funny things. So there is the spirit of this species when you contact it become quiet. So, mother when because she has come to change the law, there is a fast forward evolution in everything. And our closest cousins, monkeys, animals, they are behaving like humans. Why? Because humans are behaving like them. No. <laughs> humans have to evolve. So, they are saying we are going to occupy your space. You better evolve. Otherwise, we will take you into ourselves. So, this is how things are. So, anyway. Um, but this apparent and secondary truth is final to us only so long as we conceive of force solely. That it is a fixed law. There is nothing like that. It looks like that. It is then a self-determining power in universal consciousness. A capacity in self-awareness of infinite existence to perceive a certain truth in itself and direct its force of creation along the line of that truth which has presided over the cosmic manifestation. This power was known to the Vedic seers by the name of Maya. What does it do? It brings out of the unmanifest 
possibilities based on what the will of the lord maya is carrying the maya pati in her heart always always wherever she is there because this is what she is trying to do long back when one of my mama ji was very ramcharit manas and all that and i was that young that time that material science it is all nature thoda philosophy padh liya tha western philosophy it's all nature you don't need to bring god agnosticism entering through some door i told him it's all nature what are you speaking of god so he said only one line which i remember all my life he said beta prakriti ke piche prakriti ke swami khade hain i don't know why it struck me deep though i didn't understand what does he mean there is the lord of prakriti behind prakriti it didn't make sense to my logical mind but a deeper sense accepted it as a truth and over a period of time i realize more and more so they are always together she is carrying the infinity in her heart that's how she can do what she is doing and to each thing she is trying to do just that right turn and movement it is the self determining power maya meant for them the power of infinite consciousness infinite consciousness to comprehend contain in itself and measure out that is to say to form for form is delimitation name and shape out of the vast illimitable truth of infinite existence it is by maya that static truth of essential being becomes ordered truth of active being or to put it in more metaphysical language out of the supreme being in which all is all without barrier of separative consciousness in the sachidananda everything is all together emerges the phenomenal being in which all is in each and each is in all for the play of existence with existence so this is the whole secret and we can take an example of any creation a person wants to write a poetry there is something like what is the state first state is you want to write something it's called estrus then you sit and there is an idea ah how does idea come very interestingly and we'll see about it later there is a actually a flash of course no bulb lights up like that uh, get idea wala advertisement but there is actually a flash and then there is a maybe a phrase or a just a word idea and then you write now is does that exhaust all your creativity no tomorrow you may have another idea and want to express it differently so it implies there is within me or in everyone when one is in a state of apparently doing nothing but possibility of everything suddenly something emerges which brings out from within me a possibility gives it a shape a form an order carrying it to its ultimate logical limit that power is maya but all the time it is still me who has expressed itself vyas cannot say i am sorry i didn't write it don't put a court case on me that i told about violence he has written it he can't say it's not me but if we say vyasa is only mahabharat then we are doing a mistake that's the difference we have to understand this world is nothing but god manifesting himself but if we say god is only this world only nature then we are making a mistake there are many things in him that are waiting for manifestation in the example of vyas itself after writing mahabharata the compiling the vedas the puranas he is still restless with the teestress of creativity and narad he is moving around the banks of the river and narad tells him i know why you are restless he says what is it what is it he said because you have written everything but there is something most important you have not written this is what he says the story of krishna as he has uh, defined krishna as the indefinable <laughs> aparimer mahabharata only one definition of krishna is beyond measure is like saying krishna is krishna don't try to define him i am also not defining but then what about his exploit so he writes the bhagavat puran 
So if somebody before the Bhagavad Puran would have said Vyasa is this, he would have said my best is yet to come. When people are 60, their best begins to come. <laughs> At 80, mother's words. But we have this idea, 60, At 80, <laughs> we start arranging our own funeral. <laughs> who will come, who will not come, what epitaph you will write. Dekh lena, amara kriya karam thik se kar dena, stuff like that. So, but that's not what life is meant for. One who has realized Sachidanand works till the last breath. That's how it is described. Of course, he changes the field like Vyasa. So, the lower present and deluding mental maya. So then what happens? This play of all in each and each in all is concealed at first from us by the mental play or the illusion of maya which persuades each that he is in all but not all in him. Instinctively we feel everybody should be like me. Everybody is like me. Everybody must become like me. <laughs> Initially. This is where the delusion, moha. Origin is each is in all and all is in each. One of the sobering experiences of life is which Shobindo captures in uh, one of his aphorisms. There is no sin in the world that is not in me. You discover it. And as long as we are saying others are sinning and I am the cleanest guy in the holiest world simply because I am wearing a white uh, dress or a gerwa dress or whatever. I'm just fooling myself and others. Fooling others is still okay but fooling oneself. So, but first there is this veil. Mental Maya. Afterwards, we have to emerge from this error into the supramental play or the truth of Maya where the each and the all coexist in the inseparable unity of the one truth and the multiple symbol. Each child for a mother is the same child. But in a dealing, she will be different. That is based on different. A sick child may get more attention. It doesn't mean she has values. She values all the children equally. So something, we are just looking at it through human images. The lower present and deluding mental maya has first to be embraced. Look the path he is showing us. Has first to be embraced. Then to be overcome. First the Gita. Then the supramental infinity. And that's why we see that the Yishubinda says uh, the Gita is a very powerful preparation for entering into this yoga. You embrace the world and overcome it. So first the lower present and deluding mental maya has first to be embraced, then to be overcome. For it is God's play with division and darkness and limitation, desire and strife and suffering in which he subjects himself to the force that has come out of himself and by her obscure suffers himself to be obscured. Vidyancha, Vidyancha, Avidyancha, Mrityum, Tirtva. He has chosen. We may blame him, but that doesn't help. We have to go through that challenge of life. And there is a purpose. All that he will reveal later why he chose to obscure himself. But this is the process. That other Maya concealed by this mental has to be overpassed, then embraced, for it is God's play of the infinities of existence, the splendors of knowledge, the glories of force, mastered and the ecstasies of love, illimitable, where he emerges out of the hold of force, holds her instead and fulfills in her illumined that for which she went out from him at the first. So he goes into the prison, emerges from the prison, faces the challenges and then dances on this Kaliya serpent, then dethrones Kansa and then establishes Bharat Bhumi through the war of Mahabharata. This is the story of man. Can't run away. Even running away would be a survey purpose. Krishna goes as Ranachod. For a greater purpose. It's not running away. It's a wrong uh, way to look at it. And he goes, Kali Yavan, that story is so beautiful. 
This distinction between the lower and the higher Maya is the link in thought and in cosmic fact, which the pessimistic and illusionist philosophy miss or neglect. Because they only see the mental Maya and it can take very hideous forms, it's true. There is an Asuric Maya. Mental Maya can go to any extent. There it has taken new form, woke Maya. Mental Maya can take, as if it is making you awake, but actually it is making you sleep. The freedom Maya. Freedom because it's a word. You are free. But actually it is making you bound more and more. This is the Asuric Maya, which can completely delude the mind. It can, because we catch those words, na, oh freedom. So children nowadays say freedom, freedom, freedom. But there is no freedom without self-discipline. There is no freedom <laughs> like that. <laughs> Mother spoke of that. I don't mean by freedom that you, you can do anything whichever you feel like. It is the freedom to make choices and to accept the consequences. That freedom we have, all of us have. And through that we grow. So this is where the two mayas. To them the mental maya or perhaps an over mind is the creatrix of the world. Pessimistic philosophies. And a world created by mental maya would indeed be an inexplicable paradox. Maya has, uh, somehow there is Sachidanand, is par priye tum ho madhu hai, us par na jane kya hoga. Or you put it in another way, wo dunia mere babul ka ghar, ye dunia sasural, bad example though. Sasural is also, every girl wants to make sasural like the father's place. Does it very nicely, smartly. Indian women know it. She still has that image in mind, exactly like Maya. So she, Maya has in her heart, who? The Jagdishwar. She is building according to that, but you will feel she is doing according to you. So the girl is slowly tuning you according to what is in her heart. And you think you are the boss, you are the master. So this is how this Maya operates. So those who see the mental maya don't see the wisdom in the heart, don't and suddenly have contact with Sachidanand through the over mind, they don't understand this world. So they create a worse paradox by saying it is because of maya which is an inexplicable paradox. How did maya at all come into existence? I think we can stop here and continue tomorrow.